Hey folks, Chris here with Shucks and Bands. This is a, an assembly and instructional video of our modular cabinet system, or the MCS. We're gonna launch into the assembly of the tall cabinet, then we'll bring you through the short cabinet assembly, that into the full assembly of the tray and to the slides, and then finally, we will do the installation into a vehicle. Now, we don't have a storyteller here. Um, we're gonna uh, pretend that we've got this whole setup on the bench so you get a better visual of it but it'll give you a good understanding of how it goes into the vehicle. Let's launch into it. Okay, what we're looking at here is a, a table full of parts. So just want to give a quick reference. There's the front of the uh, tall modular cabinet. There's the door. There's the back. It's solid. That'll be the difference between the two. And here are the sides for it. You're going to have three shelves and top. They're the same part. Um, they're not out here. You'll see those in just a few minutes. But right now, we're going to do the assembly of this. So when you get this, you're going to have some hinges and some handles and things like that. We're going to show you how that goes together right now. Um, all of the hardware is exactly the same. It's all quarter 20. It's all the same length, so you don't have to worry about um, what goes where. Just use the same bolt everywhere. And I'm going to go through this quickly because you don't want to sit here and look at me or listen to me for very long. So. Should be self-explanatory. Four holes that go there. And then a washer behind these. Now, I have this propped up on the pieces of cardboard that come in the um, package, and that's just so we can get access underneath here easier. It doesn't have to be done that way. We just find it easy to kind of prop it up just to get quick, easy access to this stuff. So again, a washer and a nut on each of the fasteners, and we're not going to tighten anything down. And while Kevin's doing that, I'm going to show us how we do these little latches. Should be self-explanatory, but you're going to loosen that bolt in the back there. You're going to set this in here. You're going to release this lever so that comes up. And then this just goes back onto the back. Um, you're going to get two little brackets that look like this. One goes on the top, one goes on the bottom. In that orientation, top and bottom, and that's just so the, do uh, so the door has a stop against it. Okay, all of that is set. Now, as we mentioned earlier, you've got your 7 16th box wrench, your 5 seconds Allen wrench, or your impact gun. Um, all of those fasteners are loosely set in place. The key thing here is that there is an, a space around the door, and we want to look to make sure that the um, space around it is even throughout. If you get off, no big deal. You just have to loosen the hinges and move it around. We have a little bit of slop in there just so we can make some allowances in it. Um, so if you set everything in there, you tighten it up and the door is uh, hinging down or it's touching, you're just gonna need to loosen the top and the middle here and lift it back up and tighten it back down. Um, that looks even on this one. So I'm gonna go about tightening all of this down. 
and uh, we'll zip it together and then we'll start on the next part. There's the door. When you open this down the road, we'll make an adjustment to the screws in the back here to set the depth on how tight that is, but we're not gonna do that at the moment. Okay, we're gonna set this aside and start building that. So we are gonna put the sides onto the back and this is just loose initially. Um, one thing to note that the holes, if they don't line up, so these top two holes line up, the bottom two holes line up, but the middle doesn't, you just have to flip the panel around. So there's only one way to go, do that. You won't get it wrong. Set this up here like so. Put a bolt through there. Extra set of hands like Kevin's here really help, but you can do it solo. Now, we're going to move this into place, and these will be snug. Okay, so... There are three different elevations. We're gonna sit, put these in the middle, um, but you have a choice there. Okay, they're all in here. Now, just have to go through and tighten everything down. Okay, we've obviously tipped it up. We've gone through and we've tightened down all the fasteners. Um, we talked uh, earlier about the reveal on the opening on the door. Now's a good time to check and make sure that you're happy with that. If not, make the quick adjustments, it's easy. Um, a few things that we wanna point out at this stage. Um, on these latches, on the back, um, we set these before you get them, but if this gets closed and it doesn't have that positive connection and it's loose, you're gonna need to thread this bolt out and then tighten that nut back down. We wanna have a good positive bite there so it keeps it nice and snug. Now, we also have a bag of felt that we send out and these doors are reversible. So if your door got scratched up for some reason on the outside in the future, you could flip it around and have the scratch on the inside. We also send the felt out for you to put on um, for that reason. The felt is just to isolate the vibration between the door and these stops and then the door and the front of these. But we don't know where you're gonna set these shelves if you're gonna have them in the top. So we don't put it on here. So there's gonna be four little pieces, one for each corner of the door, top and the bottom. And then once you have your shelf set, you set the piece right there. And then lastly, because we also don't know where you're gonna set the um, shelf height, to trim it out, we give you these little plastic plugs and you just go through and pop those in. Doesn't that look nice? Finishes it out. So that pretty much wraps it up for the tall unit. We're gonna jump into the small unit and see how that goes. 
Okay, we are going to do the assembly of the short cabinet for the storage solution. So we have a bunch of parts out here, well not a bunch, I guess five. Um, this is the top of the unit and it can be run in either direction. Probably most people will have it in a pan form like this because it has a little bit of a lip. So if you're putting a, an electric cooler or something on there, it'll keep it um, contained. Um, over here we have the two ends of the cabinets. This is the back and this is the front. So this will be open concept, no door. Maybe it's more of a cubby concept. Um, and this is gonna be straightforward and pretty easy. So let's get to it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a few fasteners and we're gonna take these doors and we're gonna put them just like, or the doors, the sides, excuse me. And obviously if you get it in here and the holes don't line up, just flip it around. Um, if for whatever reason you get one scratched while you're working on it, they're the same part so you could reverse it and have the scratch on the inside. Heaven forbid that happens, but um, they are the same, they're mirror image, so you could reverse it that way. Okay, you can leave those just like that. Now, this part, um, maybe you're working on a workbench like this. Um, if so, it's a good time to pull it off just so you have access to the holes. If you're on the um, ground in your garage floor, we send these big cardboard strips uh, to help protect the package. That would be a good way to put them underneath these things to elevate it so you can get access to it. You can work on the ground. Um, well, be quite as easy because you're not going to be able to get access to these holes but it's not that it's not doable okay so in this particular one we're going to have the uh, top facing up Okay, now we can take the top and sneak this on here. Get one side on there. And what I mean by one side is you can get a bolt through the one corner. It's going to keep this whole assembly together. So that will go there. everywhere there you can snug that in um, there's one thing to mention here if you are putting this unit next to the tall cabinet that we make you're going to want to only do um, the end fasteners again hand tight because you're gonna to have to take them out to join them next to the other unit um, they get bolted together for extra strength and rigidity. This particular setup we know is going in with another uh, another setup. If we get these together and they don't quite line up, sometimes we have to put a little Allen wrench in there just to line up those holes, just because we want them made up, but if it doesn't quite line up, that's a way to, to get around that quickly. Generally speaking, you shouldn't have to drill any holes out on this stuff, joining it together. Okay, now I'm not gonna finish the other end because I know this is going into a unit where we have a tall cabinet next to it, but just to give you some visual reference, there we go. You set this down like that. And you can see when it's right inside the tray, you've got all this easy access that's got, you know, it's contained. And then for this particular customer, they're putting an electric cooler up here. 
Um, now is the time to go through, I realize I missed one right there, um, to go through and tighten everything up. Except the end, if you're doing it with a tall cabinet, you're gonna wanna just have them thumb tight until you're ready to join the two together and you'll pull those fasteners. Okay, you don't need to watch me do this. So go through, tighten everything up. And if this is the only thing you're putting in the tray, I don't mean only, if this is what you're putting in the tray, tighten everything up everywhere. If you're putting two of these together, leave the adjacent side loose, get them both in there, put the bolts back through, tighten all of that up. And then we're gonna secure that to the tray. We're gonna do that video next where this goes into the tray. Okay, we are working through this process. Um, we've got the cabinets assembled, whether it's the short cabinet you've got, the tall cabinet. We are going to put those assemblies inside of the tray and mount that together along with the slides. They have to all go together. Um, there's a few things that I wanna point out to make your life easier. We're doing it on a workbench. I would highly encourage you to do it on a workbench or a picnic table, something like that. It can be done on the garage floor, but it's easier up here. Um, one of the ways that's easier, if you can clamp these flanges down, they have a tendency to want to flip over. So if you can clamp them down, that'll help make your life a lot easier there. Um, we have gone about putting cardboard underneath the tray. You might cut up the box that we've shipped this into you, and that's just going to prevent the black slide from getting scratched up by the tray. I'm just going to tuck that back in there. Um, we send some of these out for protection. Those are going to be very handy. Um, we're going to set those like that and that's to allow us to set this cabinet down on the tray and not get our fingers pinched. Um, one thing to mention that when you're putting them in the back of this cabinet, leave a couple fingers, fingers width between the cabinet and the end of the tray, just so you don't pinch your fingers in there. Then we can slide that back. Uh, one other thing to mention, if you, when you go to um, set the slides in here, the tray is 20 inches wide, so we clamp these down and we measure 20 inches between it. Once we have those set with clamps, then we come out here, we release the red lever, we pull these all the way out. The thing to mention is that through this square hole right here, when you look through there and you look through the hole on the tray, it doesn't line up quite at that mark. You have to come out to full stop and then go back about a half an inch. And when you do that, then you'll see daylight through that square opening and through the hole in the tray. The red handle is flush with the end of the tray in its final uh, assembled position but again you want to make sure you see daylight through that square hole through the tray everything um, okay we're gonna grab the unit come over here and set it on here right now Again, leaving a couple of inches, uh, a couple of fingers width between the end of the cabinet and the end of the tray there. And again, we set these up here so we can lift this up and pull this out and then slide it down in here. Now that will pinch your fingers if you're not careful there. Yep. And then we just slide it back, just like that. Okay, one thing to note right here. Um, there are holes in this box and in our tray. And if you have a storyteller, you're not going to use the furthest set toward the back of the tray. We use this tray and this concept in storytellers and non-storytellers. Storytellers get a 52 inch slide for a particular reason. The others get a 58 inch slide. If you have a storyteller, you are not gonna use the back holes in the tray or this box. Just don't worry about that. Um, We've got this lined up, and I want to show you something that makes this whole installation a little bit easier. When we go to do this, because there's space between the bottom of the tray and this, so it doesn't scratch or doesn't drag and hit the bolts, there's a little bit of a, a drop there. So if you take your hand and you push up just a little bit, you can insert that fastener very easily. Otherwise, you're trying to lift this thing up, and it's just a little more difficult than it needs to be. You have to pinch that part right there just to get that nut started. Ooh. Okay, that one's on there. Finger tight is just fine. So 
We'll do the other side. And then um, once you have those two bolts in, you're gonna take this whole assembly and you're gonna pick it up just a little bit and slide it back. And the only reason I'm picking it up is so it's not dragging uh, the bottom of the tray on the mounting flange. So we're gonna come back to somewhere in this area here. There's a hole, but got lucky on this one. Um, and it's right here, but the hole isn't showing here. So I gotta go do this again. By there. So we'll see daylight through this location right here. And again, put up a little bit of pressure there. Sometimes if you take your Allen drive and you thread it in there a little bit, it just helps get some bite. And in you go. Flat washer on that. I lock nut. There we go. Go around to the other side. Once those four are in place, that is, um, you can tighten those down um, and get that all wrapped up. If you're putting in a short cabinet or another tall cabinet, then um, now's the time to go through and put all of those fasteners in that cabinet. And then if you have a short cabinet, you're only using the bottom for it and not securing the two cabinets together. You'll go from the inside of one cabinet through the other side of the cabinet, clamp that together. If you've got a tall cabinet, obviously you're gonna have six fasteners there. In this case, this customer is only getting a short cabinet. Once you're wrapped up with that, Everything's tightened down. We're almost to go to the installation in the vehicle. Okay, we don't own a Storyteller. Um, we have Sprinter and a Revel in the shop, but no Storyteller at the moment, so we're, imagine this as your Storyteller. Um, here's your L-Track. If you have a Mode or you have a Mode LT, essentially the same thing, the Mode uh, LT spacing is just a little different, but none the wiser. Um, what we're really looking for is the, the spacing from the edge of the wheel well boxes to our studs and we send literature out with our products that indicate uh, where those should be on the passenger side or the driver's side. So look for that information that'll tell you where to put these L-Track studs. One thing I want to clarify, um, I've had this question asked a couple of times, what is the um, sequence of these bolts, uh, the L-Track stud and then the other parts? So we put the L-Track stud in there. It doesn't go in the center of the circle, it goes between the two circles. Then you're gonna take this little rectangular looking part, it's got a square hole, drop that on there, and then a fender washer, that goes down. You're gonna put a fender washer on top of the flange when we get that. Um, we've gone about, uh, gone ahead of time and set those up, so we're good to go there. We're gonna walk and grab the tray, and we'll come back and set it on here. So you and your helper, you've got your tray in your van. A couple of things to um, make note of. When you set this in here, we have elongated slots in our flanges, and that's to help for little variances that we have from band to band, um, or storyteller might have from band to band. One thing that you might want to do is look at, we would encourage you to do, is look at the flange in relationship to the wheel well box on the passenger side in this case, or on the driver's side. That way you don't have them really out of whack from each other. You could have quite an angle there. It might not look great. Um, the other thing to mention, if you just have a singular tray in the van, this is less of an issue. But if you're gonna put a 20 by 60 in let, the mode, let's say, a 20 by 60, and then you're gonna put the 19 by 58 on the other side, or in the mode LT, you'd have 18 by 60 on one side and the 18 by 60 on the other. Um, it gets pretty tight because we've tried to maximize the distance, the, the space in these trays. So you want to register this tray towards the passenger side, or if you're working on the driver's side, you want to register it as close to the wall as possible. And then again, so like this case, I'm going to slide it over. You can see there's some slop that we've accounted for in there. You want to do that, and then again, check reference. Now you're going to be inside the van, so you'll slide it over, and then you'll step out and look and see, or you could put a tape measure from the flange to the wall. Once you've done that, you're, you're um, 
good with that, we want to kind of very slowly and gracefully pull the tray out just enough to expose these first set of L-Track studs. And what we're doing there, um, particularly if you're parked on a hill, um, we don't, there's some tension in the slide, it won't just slide out on its own, unless you're on a steep hill. And if that's the case, you wanna make sure that these back two have a, a washer and a nut, just so this thing doesn't slide out of the back of the van and then tip up and out. So we've got these down, they're thumb tight. Now, we're gonna go through and set up all of these. More than likely, what you're gonna find is these might get out of whack again by getting these uh, pieces of hardware prepped. Uh, we're not gonna tighten down, but while you're getting prepped, this may get out of skew, so you might have to check that one more time. Um, a couple of washers and the nuts there. Slide this all the way out. We'll drop that on there. In a nut, let me go grab one. Okay, so all of our hardware is prepped for tightening, but again, this might have gotten out of skew. So we're going to now take this. You do not want to tighten it down in this. Uh, position because just for visual you can see how much I can move those just by hand so you don't want to tighten this down in the out position we want to tighten down in a very particular order very very particular fashion and that's to keep these two slides parallel to each other just like a kitchen drawer it won't slide out or slide in if they're tapering in or tapering out so in order to do that we're gonna slide the tray back in. We're gonna check your flange to the wall of the van. That looks parallel and you're happy with it. It's slid over as much as you can get it and it's parallel. We're gonna go back to these studs in the back. We're only gonna tighten one side at a time. I'm not gonna do, I'm gonna tighten this side. Uh, if you're tightening the driver's side first, that's just fine. I could start on that side, but you only wanna start by tightening one side first. So I tighten that down. I'm gonna gently open this up to expose the next nut right there. Tighten that one down, and then we can slide this out and tighten that one down. And um, a 20 by 60 tray, um, it comes back further. This is actually a 19 by 50 that goes on the driver's side in the, in the mode. Um, a 20 by 60, you can't get access to it because it's two inches longer, the, the nut. So what you have to do is close this up and then you go through the hole right here and you tighten that one up. Now, if this side is set, now is the time to go back here and gently open this up and we'll go through and we'll tighten up that side all together. Once that's done, you're ready to go. One thing to mention, um, we have seen this a few times. Um, if for whatever reason, these, you tighten all of this down and something got bumped and they're off just a little bit. They're not in the same plane um, fore or aft. Sometimes this one will stay locked and that's because they're not parallel to each other. They're not uh, referencing this same plane or this plane. So you just need to check that. In this case, they're both like, if I release this one, this side's keeping it locked, that's keeping it locked. If uh, you release one and the other side isn't there, it'll, uh, it'll come out on its own. So you just have to go through and, and recheck that. Um, that's about it. Not too hard. If uh, anything is unclear or you have questions or feedback, let us know. Um, I'm here to help. You can call, you can text, you can send an email. Happy to get you going. Thank you guys very much for your business. I appreciate it and uh, we'll see you later.